everybody. Welcome back to Coldwater, Michigan. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and this thing right here is, in my personal opinion, one of the coolest, most impressive, most innovative couples camping floor plans I've ever seen in the history of ever. And I have over 6,000 videos I've put together of campers, so I feel that's saying something, but that's my two cents. I'd love to hear from you. This is the 2516S Rockwood, and here with the 23 updates, I think better than ever. So this camper, if you've never seen it before, it gives us a, uh, a great front kitchen for a small camper, a living room slide that is floor flush, which allows for a true theater seat or hide a bed or even dinette option you can put in here. And it is now carpetless, which is something I think a lot of people are going to be excited about. But the cherry on top of this one is the fact that it gives us a 60 by 80 true queen bed slide. And the whole thing is less than 26 feet long. That is crazy cool. And there are not a lot of other RVs that can, that can uh, you know, meet the qualities that I just described there. Now, taking it up another notch, you might notice they put like a maximum length awning on here. Uh, they've got factory standard 200 watts of solar that you'll see today we have expanded upon right from the factory, although we could always do that at the dealership level for you too. Uh, these also include factory uh, inverters to be able to power multiple outlets in the RV in case you're just like in a parking lot somewhere and not tethered to uh, park power. These use a different kind of suspension that is so much more comfortable for uh, like highway use, especially those really sharp curly Q corners, enclosed belly, tank heaters, double Asdell walls, all kinds of good features wrapped up into this one. Um, it's got a couple little hiccups and hangups though. Uh, the smaller an RV gets, the trickier design gets to be sometimes. And one of the things on this one with having a slide in a kitchen all the way on the nose, it does have a little bit of a, uh, a heavy enough hitch weight that it might be pushing the limits of some half ton pickup. So is it half ton towable? Is it not half ton towable? That might really depend on your vehicle and giving you that kind of information to make sure we're putting your safety before the sale. That's what we're going to do here for you at Bish's RV. Hit that like button, subscribe to our videos if you're new with us, and let's get inside and see what else she has to offer. Now we've got to start somewhere. So I figure the main entry door makes a perfect reference point, but look at the shade right here. That shade opening from the bottom up is going to be basically an industry-wide change and update. And that has been spurred on by feedback on videos like this one right here. Um, the uh, a, a lot of folks really were talking to Keystone Cougar uh, on my videos and said, you know, you should really have a shade in that entry door window. So Cougar did it. And they said, that's great. Now, can you make it open from the bottom up? The trick was that shade is installed by the door supplier and your feedback has literally caused like an industry-wide change. So if somebody knocks on the door sitting here, you still maintain privacy. But if you stand up, you can peek over the top and kind of see what's what before you answer the door. So once again, your feedback does matter and please keep it coming. So what are we looking at here on this camper? Well, uh, there are two different interior decors. We're looking at the darker kind of warmish decor. There's also a lighter, brighter decor that's available. Uh, they also give you a choice of exterior looks on these. And I'm really glad that we have a chance to look at this one in, in today's, you know, outfitting basically, because the last couple of years I've had the, uh, the light interior, light exterior versions available for you. So now you get a, uh, a contrast. And if you're kind of curious to see what the other one looks like, check out my 2022 footage of this one. And there you go. Now, you notice uh, the TV straight across from us here at the uh, the Theater Seat Entertainment Center. That's been updated to be a 12-volt TV soundbar combo this year, by the way. They've also standardized a bigger, more powerful 15,000 BTU air this year. So no more need to upgrade the air conditioner. Now, this is a mini light. These are 30-amp service and single air only. If you start wanting to get second air conditioners, that becomes available in this one's big brother, the Ultra Series. And they make basically a stretched version of this called a 2608 Rockwood Ultralight. So, you know, if you're looking for a little smaller, this is going to be your Huckleberry. If you're looking for something a little bigger, that would be your Huckleberry. <laughs> What's cool, though, is the construction is basically the same. Like, you have the solid surface counters uh, throughout the family. You've got that larger 22-inch oven instead of the 16-inch Easy Bake oven. They've also updated their uh, smart command system this year to that little, uh, basically the same control panel that Cherokee and now a lot of brands are using. Um, I'm not, I ain't mad at it. It works just fine. I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. By the way, every single duct in this can um, turn and open independently. So you can do whatever you want with that. And this is a laminated roof. And you're going to see that I can walk all over that thing in uh, just a little bit here. Now, no matter the fact that this is not a very large floor plan, they still centralize the air and add double ducting to really cycle the air through this one well. 
Now, campsite windows here are at a bit of a premium, but you might have noticed when we were sitting at that theater seating, it doesn't feel super cramped in because you do have the window coverage of that big front windshield, that little side spot kitchen window there, and of course the entry door, depending on what you choose to do with the shade there. Um, these outlets, and you'll see multiple outlets in the RV have a little tag on them that say basically inverter circuit, and that's what uh, you can activate over here. That's the gray square switch on the right hand side. Um, it's a thousand watt inverter, which isn't extremely large, but it's also about a thousand watts more than almost any other manufacturer includes standard from the factory. So there are multiple outlets in this RV that if you're, uh, you know, just in a parking lot or untethered or something like that, you don't have park power, you don't have a generator, they can still operate. Now, I blew some people's minds, I think, last year when I was recording this RV, and I told them, before you ever open this refrigerator, always make sure you knock. And they were like, why? And I said, just in case. There's a salad dressing in there. <laughs> so I was on vacation recently with my family and uh, it wasn't an RVing vacation, um, but uh, we were at a hotel and every time I got in the elevator with my family, I was hitting my daughter with elevator jokes. And you're like, what do you mean elevator jokes? And I said things like, you know, this elevator it's kind of like my jokes, Chloe. It never fails to let you down. <laughs> and one time there was another family in there, and the other dad goes, <laughs> nice. And I was like, yeah. Oh, crap. I got dirty shoes, and I, I have, I've kind of tracked up and mucked that up down there. My apologies. What is nice, though, I guess that's a perfect segue to talk about the fact this is easy cleaning. No floor vents, and the slide floor is now carpetless. That is a, uh, another one of the updates versus last year. I think that a lot of people are going to be happy to see. Now, you have a choice between several different seating configurations over here. This is my personal preference with the theater seating, kind of showing you all the different functions and the storage of the RV. But keep in mind, you have the ability to outfit this one with a theater seat uh, that is very cuddle compliant. You have a fold away armrest we'll see in a minute. You've got that table that comes with either the height of bed or the uh, theater seat sofa options. So you do have a place to eat in here or you can float that table outside. You could also option this um, to be outfitted with a, uh, a U-Dinette, I believe, because that is a floor flush full depth slide, which is another of the reasons this one has a little bit hefty hitch weight. They didn't use tiny, shallow, ultralight slides. These are heavy duty rack and pinion slide outs so that it can actually hold up and handle the load demands uh, that are being thrown at it effectively. Um, so I'd be kind of curious, which... You know, would you like the lighter or darker decor? Would you prefer the uh, the theater seat, the height of bed, the dinette? How would you like one of these outfitted? I'm always kind of curious about that. Now, while you're kind of talking amongst yourselves, I do want to point out that a couple years ago, they did standardize the previously optional uh, roller shades. So you might have noticed how I had those pulled down through the RV. Although the big front windshield, by the way, does have a, a pleated draw shade to it. Now, you might have noticed how I used the word windshield instead of window on the front. It is an automotive bonded glass. What that means is multiple panes of glass bonded, glued, laminated together effectively. Um, that way, uh, it's just, it's far more, you know, rugged. It, it doesn't tend to flex when um, headwinds hit it, things like that. It's not impossible for a stone to hit that windshield, certainly. Um, it is not extremely likely for that to happen. It's not impossible. Uh, it's not likely for it to break. But you know what? I'm, I'm in owners' forums and groups and things like that, and I know certainly that is something that can happen. Thankfully, it's just fairly rare and uh, uncommon. So flip around to the other side of that bathroom door. This RV has a full walkthrough middle bathroom, which has benefits and it has drawbacks. It allows them to put the largest bathroom possible in this RV with plenty of space to actually get dressed. Or if you're like me, you need more leg room around the toilet or something like that, you have plenty of space there. That's a porcelain foot flush stool. And while we're taking a look at the storage uh, that is all up behind that, I want to acknowledge that, yeah, I understand that uh, this is not the be-all end-all for everybody because there's going to be some people saying, mm, sorry, I don't want my wife to have to walk through uh, a, a, 
a pocket of air that could make a honey badger's eyes water in the morning, buddy. What else you got? Well, you might want to look at the Big Brother 2608 version of this, which has a walk-around bathroom. They're both going to have a radius corner shower. And with their vaulted ceiling and skylight positioning, the headroom in it is fantastic. The elbow room is where that is going to be a bit of a trick point. But again, I try to share good news with bad news so you can make the best and most educated decisions possible. Uh, Rockwood doing Rockwood things adds the little details, like the little shower, you know, uh, caddy over there to give you a place to put your shampoos and your body washes and everything else. These do have that shower miser water saver system right there. So your fresh tank, if you are boondocking, is good till the last drop. That's also something that they did improve on this uh, in some recent seasons. Now, once again, taking a look at some storage here, you got that big mine and yours lipid storage storage galorage double vanity. And that's a big countertop right there with that sink with just enough space for like a small Walmart trash bag sized wastebasket down below that. And in case you're curious, you might notice, yeah, there are some power outlets down there. I want to back up real quick to get into the bedroom here. Then I'm going to spin you around like a record, baby. You might notice that little magnet holdback. That is to hold the sliding bedroom privacy door in place. So that if, uh, you know, you do happen to have a guest or like, let's say one of you goes to bed before the other one does at night or something like that. I know there's plenty of how my household really uh, is very typically like that. I tend to just be a night owl. I usually stay up later than my wife, you know, usually just playing stupid internet games because World of Warcraft doesn't play itself, it seems. Anyway, you get the idea. I had actually played WoW in a long time, in case anyone's curious. But remember, the only thing a druid is good for is everything. And you can take that to the bank. Moving on. Back here, we have a 60 by 80 true queen bed slide. And notice, it's the same full depth slide that we had in the living room. So the amount of floor space in here, the amount of space to like get dressed and put on pants, it's fantastic. About the only option we don't have applied in here is you can actually put another Max Air vent fan in here like you saw in the bathroom. It'll be the full 11 inch Fajita Friday fume fighter fan and it will also have the, uh, the, the roof vent cover built right into it. Now speaking of built in, these little reader angler lights right here, you might notice at the very top, they also have USB plugs built into them. And what I think I would do with that is I would use the valence over here for the windows as a phone shelf. And actually here, just to help kind of demonstrate that, it fits just fine. So you can, you know, have your phone charging overnight. It can be ready in the morning. You can keep it out of the way and the USB plugs aren't, you know, dropping down like an octopus uh, trying to choke you. One other quick thing here, I always forget to showcase this. If you look over here, you see a little mini stand. It exists just to give you a place for some power outlets. You may have noticed behind, well, beside, really, the sliding door over here next to us on, uh, you know, the closer side of the bed, the right-hand side of the screen, there was a set of power outlets over there as well. You might want to back the footage up. Now, looking down below this, I love their underbed storage arrangement that they put in these things right here. For my money, it's just absolutely fantastic. It just totally maximizes the storage ability that you have in there. You also have that big closet, but it's on... The campsite of the RV, which does limit some window coverage a little bit, but it does maximize storage while minimizing total RV length. If they built a big closet on the back of this, the RV would be two and a half foot longer or whatever. Now, the TV back here is optional. Again, that is 12 volt. You saw how it can pivot out for easy viewing. And uh, you may have noticed, once again, we do have those privacy shades here. Um, my guess here in the bedroom... Is there anybody who would leave that open or would you leave it closed or would you leave it half cocked like I've done here? Like, how, what, what would you do with this thing? And while you're figuring that out, I'll kick over to road mode. All right, now for road mode, it's Big Brother the 2608. You need to use that second entry door into the bedroom to get to the bedroom and bathroom in transit. However, here in this little brother with the walkthrough middle bath, you don't have to do that. Now we're gonna get to that in just a second. First of all though, Right from the entry door, a quick look. You see, obviously, we can get to the fridge. We can get to the uh, the sink. We can get to enough of the kitchen storage that I think, uh, you know, for a quick little travel stop sandwich or something like that, you could probably make it work. But a little bit more to the point here. Uh, if we want to get to the bedroom and bathroom for, like, you know, a travel and potty stop, can you do it? And the very first time I recorded this RV, I looked over here and said, nope, you can't do it. And then some viewers who are much, much smarter than me, which is a daily occurrence, by the way, said, wait a minute, dummy. Um, did you notice that the bathroom door opens inward? And as a result, if you do a sideways travel trailer two-step, 
you actually can slide your way back here into the bedroom. You can make your way back to the bathroom without ever needing the second entry door. Now, what I just did kind of depends a little bit on your size and stature. If you're a little bit bigger person than me, you might not be able to do what I did right there. And I'm, I'm not the smallest guy by any means, but I know I've met some folks of decent stature that go camping, and I know that that might be a problem for them. Remember, you can always use that second door to get back here if that's a little bit easier for you. Now, one of the first notes I want to offer you out here is that you're looking at one of two exteriors on these. Rockwood's one of the only brands that gives you choices, not just in interior, but also exterior. Uh, personally, I prefer the lighter, brighter uh, exterior a little bit, although they did get away from the orange accents on it, and it looks like IBM monotone. It's, it's okay. I guess it blends with more vehicles, and maybe orange is less, uh, less off-putting to some people. Now, talking towing, take another look at the weights, measures, and uh, holding tank capacities here. The question of half-ton towability is something of a little bit of debate here, and I think the answer for that really depends very heavily upon the you know weights and measures and capacities of your specific half ton specifically the payload rating and the kind of uh, terrain and weather you expect to be encountering regularly so with that slide out in the kitchen all the way dead on the nose this one it does have a little bit heavier uh, hitch weight and tongue weight than uh, most other 26 foot travel trailers um, as a result, that means that some half tons might kind of struggle with this. Some half tons might not. It really, again, depends specifically on the capacities of your vehicle. Now, uh, looking at some other options that you have available here, by default, this would normally have manual corner jacks. You can see today we got our decked out with the push button easy power stabilizers right down there. And as long as we're getting up close and personal like this, let's go ahead and take a knee and look down below the, uh, the underbelly area. And you'll see, not a whole lot, because it's all nicely enclosed. What you're not seeing is the radiant barrier layer, and uh, what you're not seeing are the 12-volt thermostatic holding tank heaters that I think Rockwood's been doing longer than just about anybody else. And that is a feature that you don't typically find in this size. That's kind of what Rockwood is and does. When I say the phrase Rockwood doing Rockwood things, what that means to me is if you look at an RV in like a size category or a trim package one notch above this, that tends to be what Rockwood does in one size smaller, like that giant awning. Both entry doors very clearly covered by that awning, so you're not getting spritzed in the face every time it's raining outside or anything like that. You may notice too, they only use the stable steps and their zero G stable steps, which are the kind that basically will hold themselves up and uh, you, know, you don't have to throw out your rotator cuff uh, messing with them or anything like that. Over here down under the middle of the awning, we do have an outside TV hookup and mount right below that mini light uh, graphic. Now the RV, uh, like pretty much all Rockwoods, does come with this little outside griddle and you see that little shelf. But the little bracket that you're seeing, that is actually what would be used uh, to, to mount the griddle. The griddle itself actually kind of goes back here behind that bedroom entry door because that's where your gas grill cooker hooker is sending the gas off the side of this one. Now the RV does have double Asdell sidewalls, so it's Asdell on the inside and outside layers of the walls, right below the fiberglass and right below the wallpaper on the inside. Those are also Goodyear Endurance radials on uh, a torsion axle and suspension system. A lot of RVs have torsion axles, which is cool. Torsion suspension is the key differentiator here. And the big difference on that is like when you're going around those sharp corners, the way the suspension operates differently, you know, like those um, 360 degree make you motion sick like a carousel at the, uh, the fairgrounds or the circus kind of uh, highway exits. Most RVs want to lean off and pull you off the road. This one basically fights against that and it will just handle better at high speeds making sharp turns or anything uh, of that nature. Now on the back side here, you might notice how they do have a bumper and a 300 pound accessory hitch instead of one or the other. They've also got that hard shell uh, spare tire cover just to help offer a little bit of extra protection keeping that thing packed away from the weather. Now you notice too, factory standard ladder getting you up to that fully walkable roof. And one of the things that I really like about these, their laminated roof structure always has a very clean look on it. Now in this video footage, we're looking at uh, the expanded extra factory 200 watt solar panel you can get straight from Rockwood. Of course, we could always apply that here at the dealership too. Their charge controller and everything can uh, accept that. But one thing you might notice is right around, say like the skylight and the roof fixtures, there was a little bit of rippling. 
And a lot of people go, oh, that's really crappy workmanship. That's called off-gassing from the lamination process. That will bleed, breathe, and settle over time. The reason you're seeing that today is this is a build that was fresh off the production line. Now, outside storage on a model like this is most certainly at a premium. So the space over here under the headboard of the bed is very, very valuable. Notice too, that carpetless slide flooring is the first thing that goes down. Uh, so especially here in a cargo space, that woven marine stuff where you're gonna be sliding cargo around, that is very, very handy. Notice too, anything that's load bearing, like if you got a, a copy of this model optioned with a dinette in the slide instead of a sofa, it would also have a welded aluminum cage. Anything that will be load bearing from this company, they use a welded aluminum cage, which is kind of cool. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, what is that little door in there? It's nothing. It's just water pump and water filter access, just in case you're curious. What's kind of cool, though, for winterizing, you don't really got to deal with it because you actually have an antifreeze inlet built right into your little water hookup station over here uh, between these slides. And I've always kind of felt that hot, cold outside shower there. If you got something like an uh, uh, extendable curtain rod, you'd actually be able to use this like a little bit of a cowboy shower. Part of the reason is they actually laminate their slide walls. Funny thing is a lot of people go, ooh, laminated slide walls. Uh, a lot of manufacturers will teach people, like I just did, to punch the side of that thing. Although my skinny little bookah, chicken arms ain't gonna hurt nothing. Um, a laminated slide wall is just very consistent. It doesn't necessarily have any better structure. It doesn't necessarily have any better um, insulation factor as compared to a non-laminated wall. It's just more likely to be done the same way every single time, you know, kind of thing. Now, behind the refrigerator, because the, the slide is so deep, they didn't want to waste the space, they did put a cargo pocket right here, but I call this endoscopy cargo storage because you're gonna look uh, like Uncle Gary getting a lower GI scope sticking a camera up in this thing. It goes all the way up to the slide roof. So you might wonder, why didn't they make the door go up higher? And the answer for that is because it would be really, really hard to reach all the way up there to latch and close the door properly. So they stopped the door down at ground level. And a question I always like to ask people when I see the Uncle Gary Endoscopy Lower GI Tract Storage Solution System here, which is its technical name, by the way, don't judge me. Um, I always wanna know what you put in there. My favorite thing I've heard people say is golf clubs to fend off the gas station murder hobos will come and get you. Anyway, moving up front here. This is a fun little way that you can mess with the grandkids. Have somebody out here with your hand in here and then tell them, hey, go get grandpa something out of that cabinet. Then right when they get up here, go, because that cabinet, you might notice, goes inside the RV. And that probably uh, you know, explains a lot of things for you that happened in my childhood that shaped the person that I am today. Now, I share the good with the bad with you. This RV does have dual sewer hookups. It does have a uh, uh, bathroom black and gray in the back. It does have a kitchen gray pole up here in the front. And I don't love that. And I know that you probably really don't love that either, but I hope you appreciate the fact that even if it isn't sunshine and roses, I will still take the time to point it out on camera here because I respect that you work hard for the money. You work so hard for it, honey. And you deserve to know exactly what you're getting for your money. Now, really, you know, the biggest problem with this RV is its shelf life. And what I mean is we generally can't keep them in stock. I like to leave you links in the video description to be able to check for pricing and availability. But uh, if we don't have one in stock, if we're sold out, uh, that means that I don't have anything to reference on my website. And I, I'm not in sales. I don't have pricing files. I can only reference what we have on hand. Of course, a local team member could always get you figures and quotes on anything that you would like. Like maybe you want one with a different sofa or a different color palette or something. We can, we can always quote something like that out for you, certainly. Um, the thing is, though, there's an identical twin to this thing out there called Flagstaff. Rockwood and Flagstaff are literally the same thing. Um, I've got factory tours of their uh, mini light or micro light, as Flagstaff calls it, facility, where you can see them coming down the exact same production line. If I remember, I'll try to leave you a link for that in the description. And if I forget, leave me a little note in the comment section. I'll shoot you back a link and I'll get that updated for you. Help me help you, Jerry Maguire style. So let me know what you think about this guy. And once again, if you like how we show you the good with the bad, even giving you that towing safety advisory, uh, potentially disqualifying some of the most popular vehicles out there, meaning maybe you couldn't buy this thing when you thought you could, or you couldn't tow it when you thought you could, or something like that. If you appreciate how we put your safety before the sale, hit that subscribe button and catch us the next time around. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.